Welcome to the Home Health Minute, your monthly podcast brought to you by the Home Health Section of the American Physical Therapy Association, hosted by Troy Mead. So today we're here with Kathy Cholick to talk about the new mental health resource called Caring for the Patients, Caring for Patients with Mental Health Conditions, a toolbox for home health connections. Uh, hello, Kathy. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for those who don't know much about you, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a physical therapist. I um, am board certified in geriatrics uh, for since 1996-ish, approximately. And uh, I am the owner of a business called Living Well with Dementia, which provides consulting and education uh, to improve the lives of people with dementia. So I've practiced across the continuing care spectrum from acute uh, care through home health and outpatient, uh, a former faculty member at a university. And uh, this, is, this is what I get to do now. Exciting. So you had a big hand in uh, creating this toolbox, correct? I did. I, um, it was my uh, distinct pleasure to work with Ken Miller from New York, and a home health section member, and Sean Hagee, a PTA from Missouri. Uh, and uh, the three of us kind of sat down and Ken, I guess, pretty much brought us together saying they were working on some different toolkits for the um, home health section. And, and really, this was an area that they thought that there was a lot to be able to help clinicians um, improve our care for older adults. And so um, I, actually, older adults is mostly from my background. It's applicable across the ages, certainly. And we got together. We've been working on it. Uh, we tried to think back just the other day, about a year uh, from start to finish to get it to completion. And so we're, we're really excited to, to have it out there now. Yeah, these... Uh... From working with Ken and on some of the other toolboxes, um, or one of the other toolboxes, actually, uh, I know these, the process, you know, it takes a while, especially with all the editing and everything. So, you know, I appreciate all your hard work uh, and everybody and Sean and, and Ken's work on the project. So what was the purpose of the toolbox and, and what can we expect to learn from the resource? We really wanted to look at some of the areas, um, I think, where, where physical therapists and PTAs uh, are certainly seeing greater challenges in the population. Um, and I think it's one of the areas where we probably aren't as uh, exposed to in our entry-level education. It's, it's kind of, um, we, we get so focused on skill sets and, and different pieces that, you know, these are some of the areas that you need to spend, I think, a little bit more in-depth time if this is your population. And even if it's not, it's an opportunity to be prepared because the the number of people that we're seeing with these diagnoses I think is going up um, and we really felt there was just a greater awareness uh, for some of those health challenges. So we looked at it from you know Ken brought his familiar familiarity with issues with delirium. I was certainly able to bring my background as a dementia practitioner and Alzheimer's disease and dementia care trainer. And Sean was able to bring his background in depression and anxiety. And so, you know, the three of us really looked together to see what are the tools that are easy to use um, to assess each condition. How do we recognize um, which condition it might be, because there's a lot of overlap in their presentations. So we came up with the decision-making criteria to try to differentiate. Is it, um, you know, what tool do you want to pull out if you think that it might be a dementia, if you think it might be a depression, if you think it might be an overlap of the two? Um, and then what other things can mimic these that are not any of the three? Uh, something like normal pressure hydrocephalus, and, and how do you rule those pieces out if you are the person who's really starting to see these um, challenges uh, present when you're doing working with your patient. Sounds like it hits a lot, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the areas there in, in, uh, in mental health. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not just, I think that's, uh, I think that's great. You know, it's not just one, it's not just sometimes you just see depression or just dementia or just delirium. And I know you always do a great job of, you know, with the decision making and and uh, decision trees and stuff like that to kind of help out everybody. Exactly. So, so who, who would be interested in this, you think? Was it the new grad, the, 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 um, someone who's been in working with it, you know, working with mental health patients for a while or? Well, you know, the, the odds of seeing somebody who has some 
component of one of these mental health issues is pretty large. Um, and so really, I think anyone working in any setting, these can really apply to. The new grad, um, certainly, because it's going to help with some um, assessment and intervention kind of ideas, but also for the experienced therapist, perhaps somebody who hasn't been working um, in a home health population in a while, or um, people who are kind of like, I see this, but I don't really know how to adjust my plan of care when it presents. Um, so, you know, while we designed it for home health, I really think it applies to almost any setting. Certainly the diet, um, data, just from my world in dementia, um, you know, we, we know that uh, only a small population of people who have dementia live in nursing homes. Um, so, you know, if you work in a hospital, if you work in home health, and, and even in outpatient, there is a good chance that some portion of your um, treatment population may have this condition. And, and if you're not looking for it, you may not see it. And it certainly makes it more challenging to design a home program if you're not taking into consideration that they may not remember to do them. But also things like delirium, and while delirium is most common in the hospital, um, certainly shorter stays, additions of new medications that can happen at any time, which is a common cause of some of the um, issues with delirium, uh, as well as like new onset of infections, they can certainly, um, you know, have a new onset in any setting. And using some of these tools will really kind of help you determine is if we see a new onset of delirium, it really means we need to get medical care um, going from a different perspective. And, and so um, we need to get an intervention going with the physician and, and make those referrals. So one of the big questions is always, so if I go and, and I get this resource, what kind of benefits will I expect to see or will I get out of this for myself and for my patients? Um, you know, well, certainly it's free. So it's, you know, it's certainly cost affordable. Um, but, you know, the thing we're looking for is better care. If, if there is a change in status going on, um, we think better overall management of the patient is and their, their care plan is more likely. Uh, I often think PTs are, you know, we're, with people a lot more often, uh, seeing them more frequently. And so we start to pick up some of these things. And, and in someone's home, you can certainly pick up some of the pieces of um, um, dementia or depression that they may not be, um, they may hold it together through an office visit with a physician, but we can pick it out. So we um, looked at including some information on non-traditional areas as well, things like um, that may help be able to educate the, the person and or their family about things like sleeping, uh, how to deal with behavioral changes, uh, un recognizing pain, which we know, and particularly in a dementia population, is incredibly under-treated. Uh, and so if, if they're having pain and it's not being treated, it can cause all kinds of problems. But also how to promote engagement and, you know, certainly with the goal of helping a person be able to live home longer and avoid institutionalization. So that, that's um, what I think when we look at not standardization, but, you know, being able to differentiate and recognize some of the conditions our people have that may need modification, as well as family education. That sounds very useful. So are there other resources in addition to this that we should be on the lookout for? You know, one of the things, so Sean introduced all of us to that's included as a reference in there is um, the mental health first aid. So like um, like CPR and AED and basic first aid training, there's actually a, a whole separate wing, which I, was new for me and very helpful of mental health first aid information. Um, so that, that's something I think you can find in there. The three of us are actually doing a presentation on this topic at CSM as well. So it's a Friday evening. I don't have the time right here, but I think it's three to five. Uh, so Friday afternoon at CSM, if you're there, um, this is the topic and we're going to go over how to use the kit, how to use some of the problem solving pieces that we include with the cases in there, um, and really just how to how to use the kit and take it and apply it to your practice. I think about everybody that's done a resource lately has a, a presentation at CSM to keep everybody busy with. <laughs> um, but definitely, I, I definitely want to go check that out this year. Is there anything else that we may have missed that, um, or anything else you wanted to add? No, I, I just, um, I know we're really excited because I think uh, all of us can, can do better at recognizing when we're seeing a, a mental health status change and uh, whether it's from, you know, intervening to make sure that they're, um, to, if they're having an issue with depression, are their medications being managed? Um, and uh, I think with us practicing at the top of our license, really helping um, as part of that interdisciplinary team to say, 
are the medications helping? Are they not helping? Same thing in a dementia or, you know, if they're using a cognitive enhancer, are they helping or not helping? Are we really looking for, it talks about the beers criteria in there too, to really recognize when you're doing your, um, and medical review intake. Uh, are you really looking for contraindications in this population um, and medications that can cause delirium and or um, medications that should be avoided in somebody who has a, a dementia diagnosis? Um, uh, certainly we count on uh, physicians to do it, but we know people get their medications from different sites. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I think it's just a well-rounded and it gives you access to some tools that are quick and easy to use in the, particularly in the home health setting and are generally a lot of them are already integrated into some of the um, OASIS questions. Yeah, I absolutely think that this is a great tool to help for those types of uh, diagnoses and conditions that sometimes get kind of not overlooked, but, you know, get kind of passed by sometimes. And, and they might not be, some people may not be as comfortable to work with as well. Yeah, well, it's not one of the ones we're, we're necessarily intent on fixing because that's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really one of the ones that are going to influence how we deliver our services. Um, and, and some people think, oh, we can't do anything if they have, you know, a dementia diagnosis. And, and that's really not true. There's a lot we can do. It just has to be taken from a, um, a different approach. Exactly. Well, I appreciate your time and your work on this resource. Um, if anyone listening has not yet downloaded it, uh, like Kathy said, it is free. So please go to the store. It's on the APTA store. You can get there through the Home Health Section website at homehealthsection.org to download the, uh, the free uh, resource. Again, Kathy, I appreciate your time and uh, thank you for joining me. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Home Health Minute the podcast from the Home Health section of the American Physical Therapy Association. Check out our website at www.homehealthsection.org. There you can find links to this episode, tons of helpful resources for your practice, and how to connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.